Hey everybody, my name is Jason, also known as Pirate JC, and welcome to another Babylon video. This is it, folks. This is part number seven, the last video in our Hextile demo video series. I am so excited to have crossed this final threshold with you. Today, we're just gonna be doing something super, super simple, which is adding in some GUI elements to our scene and then clearing it out and refreshing it and resetting it all over again. I'm super, super excited that we are at this final, final stage and that you've come along for this journey with me. If you don't remember what exactly it is that we're building, let me show it to you. It looks a little something like this. This is our hex tile grid demo where you can click on any given and hex tile and get a 50-50 chance of creating procedurally generated islands. How amazing is that? I absolutely love it. Okay, so for today, as I mentioned, we're going to be adding in the GUI elements. Now, these GUI elements are pretty basic, pretty simple. They're not really, really all that uh, amazing looking, but they're pretty functional. And I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to do that. So here in our code, we're going to scroll all the way down all the way down past our um, uh, on pointer down, past where we handle the logic for the interaction of each tile. And we're gonna add in some GUI elements here. Now we're gonna start with this by creating an advanced dynamic texture, okay? So I'm creating a new variable. Uh, I'm creating a full screen UI, basically is what this is, okay, named UI. Uh, I'm then going to create a panel, okay? Now a panel is basically going to be a collection of GUI objects. So I'm going to create this panel. It's a stacked panel. It's going to have a width of 300 pixels. I'm going to align that to the horizontal center and then the vertical bottom. And then I'm going to take this panel and add it to the advanced texture, to the, the full screen UI, basically. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a GUI button. Now, this GUI button is going to be a simple button. It's going to have a label that says Rebuild Hex Grid Size 2. Uh, I'm going to say that because by default, the scene has a grid size for our hex tiles of size 2. Uh, and then it has an internal name, structure name of GUI button. Uh, then I'm going to say it's going to have a specific width and height. I'm going to color it uh, white. I'm then going to give it a corner radius and I'm going to give it a background color. And then finally, whenever we click on this, I'm going to add in this function. So on pointer up observable means when the pointer is clicked on the uh, button and lifted up, then we're going to add in this function. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, give me all of the meshes in the scene. And then I'm going to do a slice on it. And then I'm going to say that's going to be equal to scene meshes. Then I'm going to loop through that and I'm going to dispose. So basically what this does is it's a simple set of uh, lines that basically just dis disposes of all meshes in the scene. And then guess what? I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the textures. And so when we hit this button, basically what it will do is it will um, kill off all the textures, kill off all of the meshes, and then very, very simply create hex grid, run the create hex grid function all over again to create a brand new set of tiles for us, okay? Then I'm going to add in a slider. Now this slider uh, is going to be uh, set to a minimum of one and a maximum of 10. Uh, and it's going to control how big our hex grid is. Now, you could make that much, much bigger if you wanted to, but I just wanted to limit it to 10 so the hex grid doesn't get you know, unruly to deal with. And then the initial slider value of two, and again, this slider will control the grid size, okay? So the, the height and width of the slider, and then we're gonna do an on value changed observable and add a function. So basically, whenever I move that slider and I change the value, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, grid size is now equal to the, uh, I'm going to round, basically do a math round on its current value, right? So as soon as I change it, I'm going to see what that value is. And then I'm going to set grid size equal to that. And then we're going to say GUI button dot text block dot text rebuild hex grid size to the grid size. So basically the button will now always tell us what the new grid size is going to be. And then finally, I'm going to add the slider first because I want that above the button and then I'm going to add that 
second. And that basically is our entire GUI. It is really that simple. So now as I scroll over, I have a hex grid size of five. So I'm actually changing the value of grid size, which is uh, way up here. Remember, it's initially set to two. It gets changed by this slider. And then when I hit this button, what happens is we're going to kill off all of the um, meshes and textures and rerun the create hex grid. And then remember, it uses grid size as a variable in the equation for how big it should be. So as soon as I set that, there we go. We've got five and you can count them one, two, three, four, five out to the corners. And so again, you can do that all the way up to 10 if you really, really wanted to, uh, or all the way down to one single hex tile. And they all work with your 50-50 chance of getting an island. And that is it. That's basically everything. Sorry, I just realized you can't actually see. Uh, let me get rid of this, the final result here, which is uh, there, it's updating and changing the grid size and it's changing that button. And as you do it, uh, there we go. Now you can see uh, how the button label gets changed, the text on the button. And again, you can have uh, a grid size that's uh, really as big as you wanted to have, but I limited it on the slider. So that's basically it. That is the hex grid uh, video series that's come to a conclusion. We've gone through a whole bunch from using asset containers to uh, be able to instantiate things into our scenes to diving into the node material to the math involved in creating a hex grid. What an amazing, cool journey this has been. I hope you've had as much fun uh, joining me on this as I have had taking you on this journey. Thanks a million for coming along and learning with me. Uh, as always, I'd ask that you please consider subscribing to this channel just so that you don't miss any future updates and future videos that we create for you. And thanks a million for using Babylon and checking this out. And uh, we'll see you next time.